Welcome back, Tool Talk. Um, I've got a new iteration of videos for you right now concerning uh, the axle install of uh, the new um, 48 gears and ARB air lockers in the Jeep Sport uh, Gladiator here that has a Dana 44. Um, if you're not up to speed on uh, the other videos, go back and check them out. Um, at this juncture, we're uh, talking about the the, um, the guts of the Dana 44 in the front of the Gladiator. Um, in this uh, video, I don't want to draw this one out. This is going to be kind of a section of many videos as we go along and build the axle. Rather than try to knock it out in an hour video, rather than try to knock it out in a 20 minute video and then lose a lot of detail, I figured I want to chop this one up and just kind of give you guys the rundown as we start to um, uh, build the axle. So up until this point you've probably seen the video um, of me disassembling the Dana 44. That video is a is a comprehensive video on um, the disassembly, removing the axles, pulling apart the fad, the, uh, the front axle disconnect, pulling off the brakes, all of those things. And that's just a rundown on how to disassemble the Dana 44. This video is the next step to getting our pinion, uh, now that everything's gutted, uh, we're going to go into how to set up the pinion from the old to the new because if you have the new gear set and the old gear set both from Dana which is where I ordered my gears I have a 373 and then the new gear set is 488 there's a little bit of difference in uh, a few thou in how you set your initial pinion up and that's what this video is today it's how to set up your pinion for your new gear set Okay, to make this as quick and concise as possible and to make this video very helpful to others, I'm trying to set this up visually. Uh, so what we have here is our uh, 373 gear set with this enormous uh, head, which you can see numerically as you go down, the pinion head gets larger and you have more material, it's stronger. You go to a 488 uh, and then a 513 or a 538, this pinion head starts to shrink drastically and that off, um, also in a Dana 44 anything past a 488 in my opinion you start losing tremendous amounts of strength this is as far as I would go in the Dana 44 at any generation so we're in the third generation of Ant at Vantech you can see these uh, these spec out very large um, to the size of a Dana 60 in fact uh, from what I've uh, checked and uh, the pinions are incredibly well built so I've got a Dana piece here and a Dana piece here they're both marked, and what I have over here is zero, and then I've got nine thousandths. I've got a zero, and then I've got zero thousandths. So this pinion is set up to have no adjustment. This pinion stock was out nine thousandths. How do we get our measurement from here to here to make sure when it goes back in that axle that I just was uh, sitting next to, that it's not, the pinion's not too far in or too far out from where the ring gear sits. The ring gear will sit here and spin. Um, obviously, if you're setting up gears, you understand that. Okay, and so I take my my 40 thousandths, which is what the stock was behind the diff. I'm taking that, adding it in. I'm taking the 9 thousandths that is written on the pinion, and then that gives me 49 thousandths. Now, if that was a, sub, a subtracted number or a negative number, I'm gonna subtract it. But since it says plus, I'm going to go down here and put a plus. So you're adding these two because you're making up the pinion depth here. And this is the 373. So I got 49 thousandths and then uh, I bring my 49 thousandths over. And then because my pinion is zero, all I'm going to do is if this was a plus two, I would take this number and then I would subtract it. You're going to kind of do the opposite because what you're trying to do is make up the difference here. So if it's a plus it would be subtracted from this number and then that would give you your depth if it was a, a negative you add it and it's backwards because you're moving the pinion out from this this location so 49 0 I get 49 thou now I went ahead and set my caliper up with the new shim pack and this is my new one and I got 50 thou on it and 50 thou is going to give me relatively close to what I'm looking for. The stock one was was at uh, you know was also just at 40 thou. It wasn't like they got down to the uh, 
to the one thousandth place. They went, you know, kind of went to the ten thousandth place. So um, I feel like forty nine and fifty are close enough that that's what I'm going to run. We'll put fifty in there, and um, if thou make, it's not going to make or break it, but it's definitely going to uh, get us close enough to start getting a gear pattern. We're going to put that all all in after this. Then we'll put our diff in and run the gear pattern, but um, that essentially is how you set up uh, pinions. It's um, it's pretty simple if you have the numbers. You can also get a pinion depth check, which goes into the axle housing, and it's it goes across here. Across, uh, you can visualize like a bar going across, and then it gives you the depth to the pinion from the center location of the diff. So you're kind of doing a, a uh, here, You've got two axes, so you have your y, your uh, x and y. Your y axis is like this. Your x axis is uh, east to west or left to right, and you're going to measure from the x from the x to the y axis, and it's going to give you somewhere in the middle. It's going to float like right here, and that's how you get a pinion. If you needed a pinion depth check, uh, you can purchase that tool. We don't need to do that if we have uh, genuine Spicer gears, because genuine Spicer gears gives you the markings on both, you just subtract one from the other or add one to the other using a little bit of math, very basic math. Adjust your shim pack from the old to the new, stick that behind the bearing, move the race and the shim pack together, stick them back inside the axle, and then with an axle tool, I'm going to push my race and my shims back into the hub, uh, into the recess of the axle. Now, this is where I recommend some, some tools. We're talking about Tool Talk. This is my jam. Tool Talk loves his tools. I mean, this is specifically for pinion bearings in the race. And it is set up for air hammers and it's set up for a longer handle. So you might find those cheaper ones on Amazon. They only have a handle like that long. Well, when you're trying to beat it into an axle that, that's deep, you're gonna want that extra section of handle. I'm gonna use this, this race and or the, um, this is also good for putting in seals, axle seals. Just flip it over and beat in your seal. I'm gonna stick the handle on there. And this, and this way I'm gonna, it would be on the back, like that. And I'm gonna beat this race into the axle. You can see how it fits, fits in there. That's probably not the right one. I think I grabbed the one for the Differ earlier. So let's go a little bit bigger. This is where having the right tools pays off. I'll have this axle put back together. Perfect. See that? It fits in there because it's designed to install bear, uh, the race. Instead of sitting there with a piece of wood or something or you're beating your race in, go ahead and spend the hundred dollars on this at uh, I've got this at Summit Racing and have the proper tools to set this race and your new shim pack that you figured out with your math back inside there and then I'm just going to take the hammer the race and I'm going to beat that back in. That will be for another video when I start rebuilding the axle. Right now I just want you guys to know that is how you figure out numerically. There's, there's two or three different ways to set up your bearings. Uh, if you want to get, get it right the first time and you don't have to go back in there and beat the snot out of that race and Try to get it back out after you've pounded it in you got to have your math, right? Get that math right the first time when you set your pattern up You'll be so thankful you did because then when you can set your backlash you're moving the, the actual differential left and right This right here when this is done, you won't have to go back there and do it again. You might have to change it a thou if that um I've had good success where I set this up like this, I go back, set the gear up, the gear pattern's perfect. Uh, so just do the proper math, take your time, research, and um, you know, uh, be, a, be a detail oriented person. Um, I've done it more ways wrong than I ever did right. And unfortunately, I'm trying to stop you guys from having to do that. So uh, this is Tool Talk. Click, click like and subscribe. Hopefully this was simple enough math and simple enough to figure out that anybody can do a gear install. You just got to be willing to spend the money on the tools rather than the people who are doing it for you. If a gear install costs you $1,000, I probably have less than that in tools. Then you'll have them forever and you can set up other vehicles, you can help friends, you'll always be adding to your tool chest and uh, you'll be a, um, a diehard Tool Talk 
uh, aficionado. All right, guys, thanks. Click like and subscribe and uh, check out my other videos as we build the Dana 44 in the Jeep Gladiator.